Hi, Marco Di Stefano here and welcome to this new video of the virtual orchestration series. This video will be different from the others one because we are going to tackling a bit of uh, theory. The scope is to show you how I have created uh, my digital audio workstation and uh, how I'm progressing uh, to upgrade it still uh, to the next phase and uh, the way I've used uh, to create my orchestral template. So this video might be interested for all these people which are just going to create their uh, audio workstation and they want to know how to do, what's the best way, but also for these ones which already have one and are planning to upgrade and they want to know what's the best move uh, to do next. The very first things of a digital audio workstation is that we have, any, we have tools uh, like a keyboard, uh, a controller, whatever it is that we use to input uh, on the computer. And then, of course, we have our monitor or headset to listen to the results. This goes through uh, typically a module, which is the one uh, which takes care of the input output. And uh, there is a first a streaming a flow of data, which goes into that. And the next step is that this uh, data goes into the MIDI processing module, where actually the scope is to make a, a recording of this data in a MIDI format, uh, editing uh, the data, so through our PC, and uh, being able to do also the playback. But in order to do the playback, we have still another component, which is the one that is doing the samples processing. Actually, it's the one which is transforming uh, on the request of the MIDI process processors uh, all the MIDI input into uh, audio. And this is done through the use of samples. Once this is done, uh, the sample, so the MIDI is transformed into audio, is given back to the MIDI processor, which is uh, managing the playback, playback and then is uh, given back to us through our headset or monitor, whatever it is. So this is a very simplified uh, view of what a digital work, audio work, workstation is. Uh, there are still other two elements to discuss, and these are interfaces. Interfaces exist to be able to decouple uh, modules. And the first one is here, uh, is about the audio drivers. Every audio interface implements some audio drivers. And then these audio drivers are also used by the MIDI processing module to communicate with this uh, audio interface. The second one is the VST interface. VST is a standard which has been created for virtual instruments. And this allows to decouple uh, the MIDI processing, the MIDI processor module from the samples processor uh, module. Another thing I want to say is that if we uh, th look at what is the most important things for each of these three components, of course, for the first one, we need to have a very high speed uh, of exchange of data and we still need to have uh, some good uh, processing uh, capability, but this is typically built in the, into the audio, uh, audio interface. Uh, the next thing is that for the MIDI processing, we, it's very important that we have good uh, CPU uh, processing power, that we have also a lot of memory because most of this goes into the RAM, and that we also have uh, very good uh, streaming with the hard disk. And then for the samples processing, one of the most important things is the sampling, is the streaming with the hard disk, uh, then the RAM, and finally we can say the CPU. Again, this is just a simplified view. Of course, you can argue, you can say that there is much more behind that. So now the, I would like to discuss about the fact that there are three different approaches for building your uh, dig digital audio workstation. The first one is the one that I call the silo approach. The second one is the multi-layered approach. And the third one is the distributed approach. Let's look into details uh, each of the three and then at the end uh, make a comparison of the three. So the first one, which is the, the one I call the silo approach, is one where actually you have one single P, uh, PC, which is uh, running, uh, in this case, I put put in Cubase, which is running one single application, which is hosting uh, together the MIDI processor and the sample processor. And uh, uh, meaning that all these will be inside one single uh, application. So what's the advantage and what's the disadvantage of this uh, solution? In this case, imagine that inside your PC, you will have your operating system. 
inside your operating system which is already consuming resources like uh, RAM, uh, streaming of the, on the hard drives. Uh, you inside that you have your digital audio workstation, let's say Cubase, which is running. Inside this uh, digital audio workstation you will have one or many projects running. And inside these projects you will have all the VST which are defined for the project. Meaning that so as you see the samples processing is nested and is inside and happens inside the digital audio workstation. Of course, uh, if we look, for example, at contact, there have been ways to uh, still have uh, some uh, decoupling between the digital audio workstation and the sample processing. But still, all these will be inside uh, your Cubase. So it's not yet optimal. Uh, the pro of this solution, of course, is that it's very, uh, it has a very low complexity. So you can easily set up a project. So if you need to do something quick, and you don't need too many instruments, probably this is a, a nice way to go. But if you work with a big projects, then the cons is that on this solution, you have one single mach machine and you will have a very high use of the resources on this single machine. And uh, then in the end, you will see that your digital audio workstation will act like the bottleneck because it's like consuming a, a high, very high all the resources. Also, another point to consider is that uh, the multi-thread might not be opt optimal because depending on the digital audio workstation that you have, it might be that uh, this is limiting or this is uh, uh, impacting the way you then the, the, the project and the VST are, use, are accessing the multiple uh, uh, cores that you have. And so be careful and really take up, pay attention to that. Uh, then another uh, cons here is that all the VST are part of the individual projects. So it means that they are saved into the file of the projects, all the configuration for all these VST. And then it means that your project files is carrying on not only the MIDI information, but also the information that you have set up in all the VST and in ending up with creating huge files. And of course, if there is a crash that will happen on your DAO, things that sometime happens, you will also have a total crash of the configuration of the VST and it will be very difficult to take everything back. So this is the configuration which I had at least one year ago. And then I started to, I, uh, started to feel really the pain of all these limits and I was searching for another uh, evolution. When I say that the operating system is the bottleneck, why? Because if we look at the PC1 and the use of the resources, mainly you will have that your operating system, okay, of course, is consuming uh, some CPU, but not very high. It's consuming some memory and uh, it's consuming also uh, some, it's doing some streaming with the hard disk. But also then you will see that your digital audio workstation will have, will have a very high streaming of the data. So then, then yeah, actually you will have the light, light, light latency. Uh, you, will, you will have a very high use of uh, CPU for all the processing of the MIDI and the VST and the audio effects. You will have a, a very high consume of the uh, memory because uh, all the VST will be loaded in memory. And it will have also a very high uh, usage of the bandwidth of, the, of your drives because it will continue stream uh, samples from the drive. Meaning that, as I said before, your digital audio workstation becomes the real bottleneck of this solution. So how can we progress and how can we, uh, what can we do to improve this situation here? So as I said before, this is what, uh, what was my situation a few months ago. And then I, I discovered the uh, so Vienna Ensemble Pro. Um, I don't know if there are uh, any other solution on the market which do what VN Ensemble Pro do, uh, does, but okay, this is the one I know, so that's why I'm talking about it. Um, so as you can see, you are introducing a new actor inside your PC, which is uh, uh, using the VST interface, is uh, decoupling the MIDI processing from the samples processing. Actually, the communication between these two modules happens through uh, the VST interface. So in this situation, what do we have? We have your operating system. Uh, inside you have your digital audio workstation, let's say Cubase, where you still host 
and you have uh, all your projects. And then you have another module, another thread on inside the operating system, which is uh, the sampling controller in this case, which is in itself a VST and uh, has inside it all the different VST which are related to the project. So the pro of this solution uh, is uh, that uh, the samples processing is, uh, is processed separately, so into another uh, thread. And for this reason, you will end up having a better multicore usage. That's theoretical, but that I can tell you is also based on my experience. It's exactly what happened with my PC. And uh, so you, were also, we, you will also be able to decouple your project from the VST. It means that actually you can save your VST configuration and you might save it, use it for different projects. As you can understand, this is the basic of creating an orchestral template. Another point is that you will have smaller files. Uh, so you will have a smaller project file and a, and a smaller uh, sample file. So actually divided in two. And you will of course have an improved performance on the CPU usage and a better workflow. Why a better workflow? Because as I said, you can start to do seriously orchestral templates. It will also be easier to switch from a project to the other because you can still keep all the samples loaded and you will also have a quicker saving time because you might, for example, decide that when you click on the button save, you save only the information of the project and you do not save all the information of the samples controlling or you might still uh, do the two. So typically what I do is that during the composition I separate the two and I only save the project and then at the end I couple them again and I save both. This is a, 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 um, actually a required feature that is available with the VN Ensemble Pro. What are the cons of this solution is that still you will have an high use of resource on your single machine and of course more complexity in the setup. So when we are talking about orchestral, orchestral template it's something very useful to use, but it's quite an investment in time. So you have to be aware of that. Uh, if we look at this configuration, so you can see that now there is uh, another actor which uh, came in, uh, is the third one, which is called samples. And the difference here is uh, that, as you can see on the digital audio workstation row, uh, now we are not going anymore to have IG everywhere. But still, we will have an high usage of the connection to the uh, audio interface. Uh, you can now finally have from high to medium usage of the CPU, uh, because now it's only focusing on the, on the MIDI and the processing of the data. Uh, then there will be a low usage of the RAM, because actually it's not anymore in your DAO that you are going to have all the samples loaded in RAM and there will also be a low usage of the hard disk. And then also for the samples, you will see that uh, there is not that much usage of the streaming. Uh, there is a, a medium usage of the CPU, but there is a high usage of the RAM and the streaming. What you will gain here, and again, I tell you, this is really based on uh, my practical experience, is that you will have a better usage of the CPU. Since you don't have anymore one single application which is using it uh, at, uh, always at the top, uh, you will have a better usage of, the, of all your different cores and it will work much better. And then another point is that now your digital audio workstation is not anymore very high demanding on uh, RAM and uh, hard disk, but it will be more uh, demanding uh, the samples processing. So we still have something in red means that we can still improve because still you will have one single machine which is uh, very highly demanding on uh, RAM and uh, hard drive. So what's the next step? How can we evolve from this solution to the next one? This is the solution that I'm using today. And uh, if you have seen my behind the scenes and if you have listened to my compositions, you can uh, have an understanding of the level of processing power that I have with such kind of solution. And uh, in my case is, uh, is great because it allows me really to create without limits.
I must admit that in one of my compositions I was already at 29 gigabyte and I had to, to make something to fix that. But how can we proceed? Next step is that we introduce, uh, we create a rig. Actually, as you can see on the bottom, we have uh, one or two or three different samples processing module. All uh, actually are different instances of the VN Ensemble Pro and each of them is owned in a different PC. Uh, the connection to all these different PC is doing through uh, an Ethernet cable, a uh, fast Ethernet cable. And what's actually, let's look in detail about this solution. What happens is that you will have, so your uh, PC1, where still you will have your operating system, you will have your digital audio workstation with uh, the projects, and then you will have, of course, also your samples and VST loaded here. Doesn't make any sense to have a PC where you have only the digital audio workstation, at least that you are using for the, as a PC1, uh, maybe a laptop where you actually don't have that much capabilities. And then you can have a second PC where you have another operating system where you only have your samples processing with all the VST, and then, why not, yet another one. The pro of this is that actually you can reach the best performances possible. And the idea is that, of course, the more you have a PC on the rig, the better it will be. And the cons of that is, of course, that this is a very highly costly and uh, that there is also a high architecture complexity to manage. This is uh, the solution which I'm actually uh, looking to go to uh, by the end of this year, 2018. So I will surely uh, make some videos to post the way I'm building that. So now if we look into details of this solution, you will see that again you will have your PC1. What does it change? It changes that since you will not have anymore all of your samples into one single PC, the usage of resources uh, for the RAM and for the hard drive can go from high to medium. And actually you can have that all the other PCs will have uh, so also, uh, as you can see, a medium uh, usage of the processing power, RAM and uh, hard disk. Simply because you are distributing the load of the samples through different PC. Meaning that actually in this solution you don't need one single super powerful PC, but you it might work also very well if you have uh, some kind of good average uh, PC all in the rig. So as I said before, the real advantage is that now you can reduce a bit the demands of uh, RAM and uh, hard disk streaming on the different PC. Uh, as I said before, this will be the solution uh, that I will uh, implement uh, soon by the end of the year. And uh, I will just go with uh, two PC, actually one which is the main and uh, another one which is the slave. So now uh, let's try to put into a roadmap uh, what I just told you. So let's suppose that you have a basic digital audio workstation for the moment, where you have simply your PC with, for example, Cubase or whatever it is, uh, everything inside one application. So what should you do then? First of all, you are, of course, you are in the phase one. So you should, uh, po you should uh, try to boost as much as possible your machine. And how can you do that? Of course, putting the much, uh, as much RAM as possible, which is quite an investment. And then it's very important to use uh, uh, SSD. So you should ideally have one SSD which is dedicated to Windows and where you have installed your uh, Cubase or Logic Pro, whatever. Then you should have several SSD where you store your samples and avoid to have one SSD of two terabyte. It's much better if you have multiples one of uh, 500 gigabyte. And then still have a separate drive uh, for where you store your files. And this, I don't think it's important to have an SSD for this one. It might also be a fast uh, hard drive. And of course, you ha should have a good audio interface. The next phase will be to 
uh, to go to the separation of uh, your uh, digital audio workstation uh, from the MIDI processing to the samples processing. In that case, what I did is that I bought uh, Vienna Ensemble Pro and I started to do the phase two, which is building an orchestral template. Uh, so I gained being able to separate the MIDI processing from the samples pro processing and creating an orchestral template, which is uh, impacting, uh, I will say, incredibly positively, I cannot say how much, my uh, composition workflow. If you want to know how I create this orchestral template, you can still watch some of my videos uh, on my channel and be aware that I will post some new ones soon. And then there is the last phase. If this is not yet enough, go to a rig. And uh, this is where actually you introduce into your uh, configuration another PC, uh, which might be another slave or another master, depending on the PC that you have had so far. And uh, so you create a rig, so introducing one more machine. In that case, uh, so pay attention to distribute equally the orchestral template. For example, don't put in the same PC all the libraries that you use the most, but try really to distribute them. For example, putting uh, the, the strings in one PC and the brass in another one, and maybe uh, the woodwinds uh, in, uh, in the same PC, but in another hard drive. So take really some time to distribute the libraries that you use the most uh, to not be in the same PC for the best case or in the same hard drive uh, if you cannot really do differently. So that's all for this video. I hope that it was interesting to see and that this will be inspiring uh, and uh, helpful for your, uh, for your work and to decide how to progress and up upgrade your digital audio workstation. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, see you in the next video.